on the floor and she was banging the floor. Oh. So then he calls the condo bars, like everybody, and they're there to see. And I'm like, no. Trying to call. Okay. I have a foam ball I can give you. Okay, yeah. You, you can do exactly the same thing with the foam ball. Yeah, yeah. EMTs arrive. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, When you're ready, you can throw your card up on the shelf here, Barb. How are you today? I'm well. Thank you. So Grant doesn't know our structured warm-up. Who wants to partner with Grant and teach him our structured warm-up this week? You will? Okay. So you're going to, when we get going. What's that? There's, there were supposed to be five, but Gary can't make it because he ca called into work. So there's going to be four of us. So during the structured warm-up, which will start in about three or four minutes when Barb comes in, uh, you'll pair with Susan, and then you can pair with Barb. Okay. And Susan will teach our structured warm-up. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go through a structured warm-up. Uh, I'll get you two across the net from each other, Susan and Grant. Oh, okay, that'll work. That'll work. You can teach them. Um, you're going to have to teach them a structured warm-up. Um, so I'd like all four of you to go through it at the same pace. You guys might have to slow down a little or do 15 reps instead of 10 because Barb's going to be teaching Grant. Okay? All right, so...
diagonal, short diagonal. Long diagonals. There you go, Jay. Oh. Other side. There you go, Grant. There you go, Barb. That's 10. Awesome. Okay. So now we're going to rotate around Grant. One position. Grant, stay where you are. Everybody else rotate around Grant. Now, Susan, you're going to do, you're going to teach him green zone volleys. Green zone volleys. Yeah. So green zone is everything you can get with your backhand on a volley. Red zone is your racket shoulder, racket hip, this area in here, and the yellow zone is out here. So you're doing backhand, you're doing green zone to green zone, her green zone to your green zone, and you're volleying through this window. That's our objective. Okay. Yep. Okay. Heels on the blue line. Yeah, heels on the blue line. Heels on the blue line. Heels. Yeah, exactly. We're inside the kitchen. There we go. All right.
Remember to keep the elbow under control. Try and keep the elbow down. Try and keep the ball through the window. Heels in the boot. There we go. There you go. Okay, that's about a hundred. So now we're gonna I'll just get you to step aside for one second. Susan and I'll demonstrate. Now we're gonna do red zone volleys. So you're going to aim for my red zone, right? Red zone is my racket elbow. If you're a little high, it's going to be my shoulder. If you're a little low, it's going to be my hip. If you're a little inside, it's still going to be around my elbow, okay? So she's aiming at my elbows. I'm putting the ball on the ground if I can. Oops. Okay. Key here is good ready position. You want your racket up, slightly tipped towards the backhand side. Okay, okay, that's what we're doing. Okay, there you go. So she's going to start off aiming at your red zone, Grant. Red zone, red yeah. zone? She, no, no. Okay. She's going to aim at your red zone. You're just going to defend. Okay. We'll do about 50 of those. You're going to be just behind the blue line for this one. Yeah, you're going to be just behind the blue line. She's going to do about 50, uh, about 25 each, and then, uh, then you're going to rotate, and then you're going to aim for her red zone. Okay, so you're just putting it just over the net like I was on the ground. So ready position, up, and just a little bit to the back. You want to be ready for this easy one, easy oh, one, out front, back, right? Okay. So, here you go, Jay. Oh All right, hang on, hang on. Ready position, slightly to the backhand. You want to be ready for the easy one of these, and you want to be ready for the easy twist. Okay, so go. Okay. A little strong. All right, that's about 25 each, so now we're going to switch. You're going to target their red zones. So show, the, show your partner where your red zone is. 
Okay, partners, you're going to be targeting in the red zone. Back up behind the blue line, Susan. Or, I mean, Barb. Go ahead. Yep, there we go. Good. That's perfect red zone. Perfect. I got it. I got it, Susan. Red, ready, position. Yeah. Take your easy shot, back to ready. Take your shot, back to ready. Right. So your ready position is uh, just below your chin, slightly to the backhand. So 11 o'clock. If you're having trouble controlling it, just hit one ball and catch. One ball and catch. You can leave. You want to slide yeah. primarily, but if you have to take a step, take a step. So. Good. And one second, Gar uh, Grant. Give me one second, Grant. Okay. So if your feet are really wide and you need to slide, this foot's going to have to come out, going to have to come off the ground. But if your feet are under your hips, you're going to be able to slide and keep both feet on the ground. All right. So if you get too wide, you get off balance. All right, that's about 25 each. Okay, we're going to do our touch volleys now. So uh, we're going to rotate one position. Gary, you can stay where you are. Can you just step aside for one second? I'm going to be you. Barb, you're going to be there. Susan, you're going to be there. All right, so we are halfway to the kitchen. We're going to come in, line up our paddles, make sure that they're the same. Then we're going to back out halfway to the kitchen. Now, touch volleys are all about minimal paddle movement minimal paddle movement and it's going to be really important today because we're working on volleys today right so we're oops sorry barb you probably weren't quite ready go ahead <laughs> it's not moving my paddle though yeah <laughs> right so she's going to aim for my paddle i'm going to aim for hers we're not we're not taking big slashes and hacks at this can you see Oops, a little higher. So we want to go through the window, but oh. there we go. Not quite so deep. Okay, so that's what we're doing anyway. Nice and easy. Not we don't want to be hacking, slashing, stabbing, jabbing. Just nice, gentle paddle movement. You're too close, Jane. Both of you are too, way too close. Back up. You're way too close to the net. You're supposed to be halfway. Yeah, there you go. Give yourself a little bit of space. Oh, Jane, you just did this. You don't need a swing. It's a tiny little... It's a bump.
All right, everybody pause for one second. Okay, so if Jane and I are doing this, just turn sideways to me. No, nope. forehand. Okay, just, yeah. So if we're doing we're not actually going to hit balls. Um, after I hit my paddle, I don't want to drop my paddle. I want to leave it out there as a target for Jane to hit to, because she's going to try to hit right back to the sweet spot in my paddle, and I'm going to try to hit hers. We want to keep our paddle close to the ball. We don't want to hit and drop, hit and drop, because then it's a long way to the paddle every time, and we end up losing control. So just bump and keep your paddle out there where your where your partner can see it. Give them a target. Okay. Oh, too close, Jane. There you go. There you go. You're too close, Gary. Back up, or Grant. Back up a little bit. A little close, Grant. Back up a little bit. Back a little more. About halfway. Huh? You're a little close, Grant. Back up another half a step. There we go. That's better. Huh? So don't drop. You're hitting oh, and then you're dropping. Oh, okay. yeah, so Sorry. Hit and then just yeah. keep it out there as a target for you. You do. Keep it out. There we go. Beautiful. Great. Much improvement. When you hold it up too high, the paddle becomes too brittle. Okay. When you hold it down here, you're able to make it nice and firm, and there's a little shock absorption there. Okay. But if you're holding it up too high, it's too brittle. The oh, ball okay. bounces off too quickly. Everybody, that's good. Let's do a quick pickup and then we're going to do our final warm up activity, which is resets. Uh, Barb, you're right here. You can uh, feed me. I'm going to be at the white line here. Okay. So I'm going to use the stroke that we were just working on, which is the touch volley, right? She's going to hit me volleys. I'm going to return them to the kitchen. Yep. Not quite so hard. Beautiful. Oops, sorry. Another one. Okay. Perfect. So that's, so we're just using the same touch volley we were just using. I'm just putting the racket in front of the ball and just bumping it back. All right, that's all we're doing. Okay. So you're going to be at the kitchen there, Susan. You're going to back up to the white line, Jane. Okay. There you go.
You want to aim for his belly button, Barb. Aim for his belly button. Yep. Okay, let's rotate, or switch rolls, not rotate, switch rolls. So back up to the white line, come forward to the blue line. There we go. If you need a ball, I have some right here. Just call for a ball. because you're just a little bit early. Yep. So uh, just stand right here for a second. So just pause everybody for a second. Okay, the key to this shot, just like the touch ball, is a firm wrist. We're not swinging at the ball. We're not flicking it. We're not turning our wrist. Go ahead and feed me, Jane. So I'm just making a table for the ball to land on, a little platform for the ball to land on. Oops, I was a little bit high. Get it towards, try and get it towards my belly button somewhere. Awesome. Right, so I'm keeping my wrist very, very firm. Right, and just giving the ball a little push towards Jane. Right, see that? So okay. just give it a push. job. All right, let's uh, do a pickup and we'll go for a drink of water and then we'll come back and we'll get started with today's drills. Good warm up everybody. Oops, sorry.
Meeting's over. Summer play, it's always the talk of the town. Okay, so today's not a clinic, today's a practice. That's why we started with our structured warm up. <clears throat> we're going to start, we're going to do about a half an hour now. We're going to work on two things primarily today. One is keeping your elbow down we, as much as possible, right? It's, it's hard for everybody to develop this habit. We want to keep our elbow as much as possible below uh, our elbow below our racket head. Now, if the ball's down here, we obviously can't do that, right? But anything above your belly button, right? Anything above your elbow should, your elbow should stay down. We don't want to be volleying like this. And if we get our elbow out, we lose directional control of our volley, right? If the elbow's down, we're able to hit down on the ball, which is a habit that we want to develop. We want to develop the habit of our racket being above the ball, above the ball when we're volleying at the net. Because the first opportunity we get to hit a ball down, we want to hit it down. If you have to do this to get above the ball, you're not going to hit it down. It's going to be past you before, uh, before you get a chance to hit it. But if you develop the habit of keeping the racket up, when, you, when a high ball comes, you can put it down fairly quickly. And you don't have to hit balls hard if you're hitting them down. You just need to hit them down. Because if you hit them down, they will pop up, and you will get a chance to hit them hard the second time. Right? So. That's the habit we're developing. You cannot develop that habit. If your elbow is up here, you can never get above the ball. Right? So, yeah, that initially that's the way they used to teach that. Yeah, yeah. no, and uh, we, don't, we don't do, we don't, and that was fine the way people played pickleball 15 years ago, but now it's all about getting the ball down quickly. Okay, um, so that's habit number one. Uh, habit number two is the ready position. We have this habit of, especially when we learn this, to stand at the net and be in this position with our elbow up, right? I want you to return to ready position because that'll bring your elbow down, it'll get your wrist cocked, and it'll keep your paddle tip up, right? So if the ball's low on the other side of the net, I want my paddle to be high, right? Because I want that next opportunity to hit down on the ball. If the ball's low and you lower your paddle, you're going to be in trouble, right? So try and keep your paddle up, um, uh, and that's what we're going to work on today. So this good ready position and keeping your elbow down. That's all we're working on today. Okay, so if you're in a firefight and you're in defense, it helps to have a wide stance. But if I have a wide stance and I have to step out there, I can't step wide. But if my feet are narrow and I have to step out there, I can go wide, right? So it's this fine balance. This you, it's it's a read and react plays uh, habit that you have to develop about where your feet are supposed to be, right? So I like people to restore to neutral when they're not involved in the play, right? Which means get your feet under your hips. If you're not involved in the play, if you're just watching and you're standing there with your feet wide, you're vulnerable, right? As soon as you're not involved in the play, restore back to neutral. Face the ball wherever it is and get your feet under your hips so that you're ready for that next movement. Okay? Would you say it's the hips? Yeah, so, yeah, so you want to, you want to, so wherever the ball is, you want to have your, your hand is going to be pointing towards the ball and your paddle is going to be just off of that center line. So 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, think of it as 11 o'clock, right? But your hand is always pointing towards the ball, wherever the ball is, because you want to keep your paddle close to the ball. And then it just should be just above. So when I draw this line here, this point of my paddle is following the net cord. Right? It's following the net cord, because that way if the ball comes up, it's easy to get it turned around. So, but everybody's a little bit different. Susan's a different height, right? So she, hers might be a little higher. Okay? All right. So we're going to start off something very simple. Remember, we're just working on those two things today. I'm not going to get into any other technical teaching points. Keep the elbow down. Keep your racket in, in the ready position. And we're going to start off just with partner volley. Um, you and I can start since you're there. Okay, we're just going to do this. You ready? We're just volleying back and forth. Okay, nice and easy. A, B, C. Oh, we got the C. Okay, we want to try and get to Z. Okay, you can stop in here. All right, so count, count with your partner. We want to try and get, work our way through the entire alphabet. C. Yeah. 
soon as the ball hits the ground, you have to start over behind the kitchen, Susan. Behind the blue line. Yeah. Yeah, we're behind the blue line now, Barb. Barb, we're, be we're out of the kitchen now. Okay, I want you to go back to the video. Okay, oh, sorry. Later today, I want you to go back to the video to the point where we're talking about this. Okay. And I want you to go back 30 seconds and see if your racket is in the ready position. Ready position, Matt, ready position. So some of you are struggling with ready position. Let me give you a little tip on one of the ways that you can think about ready position. Use your left hand. Right? So hit the ball, touch the paddle with your left hand. Hit the ball, touch the paddle with your left hand. That might help you remember to bring the racket back to ready position. One sec. Okay, let's start counting our alphabet. I want to hear it out loud. You got all the way to Q. You got all the way to Q. That's awesome. Okay. Pause. Okay, you guys got to Q? Yes. You won that first round. You guys didn't get past Q, did you? You get to R? Oh, okay. Well, that's awesome. Okay, Grant's, Grant's our new guy today, so we're going to rotate one position around Grant. Okay, so R is our record. I want to see if anybody can get past R now. Every time the ball touches the ground, you have to start over. step in together? No. Okay, no stepping in the kitchen either. It's going to happen, but try not to. So there, yeah. and then hit what you're doing is you're touching the back and you're holding your racket in that position. Okay. So remember to get it out front.
Yeah, yeah! Awesome, okay, rotate around Grant. Rotate around Grant. We're gonna do one more of these. Okay, that was awesome. Now, all the volleys were outside of the window, and both of them were in the kitchen, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to go to one ball, four people, and we're going to try to do the same thing. One ball, four people. Okay? I don't want you to hit to the same person three times in a row. So keep it moving. A, B. Oh, try again. I'll pick up the loose balls. You guys just keep taking them out of the hopper. C, D, E, F, G, O. Okay, rotate around Grant one position.
Okay, just pause for one second. Okay, so later today, around 3 o'clock, this video is going to be on the website. Uh, I'd like you to take some time and look at it, and, and I'd like you to take a look at balls that you're receiving that are above your shoulder. The balls that you're receiving when they're, when, the, when they're above your shoulder, when you're making contact with them, is your racket face facing down, or is it facing up? Are you hitting the balls down, or are you hitting them up even further? That's what I want you to look at. Okay, that last five minutes or whatever of, a, of our, and for the next few minutes. Okay, go ahead. You win practice. You win practice when you do that. Good hitting down. We're going to change the rules now. Now you're going to hit a volley or a dink. Volley or a dink. Doesn't matter which. Volley or dink. So if it's going to land in the kitchen, I don't want you to step in the kitchen and hit a volley. I want you to let it land. I want you to hit a dink. Every single ball I want to go through this window. Whether you're volleying or dinking, I want it to go through this window. Okay? Imagine the line extended all the way across to the top of that green one. We're going through this window. Every single ball.
Okay, for the last five minutes, you're going to work on something very individual to each of you, which is to whoever you're hitting the ball to, you're trying to make them pop their return up. Right? So, you can hit a volley that forces them to reach into weakness, which will pop it up, or you can hit a dink into their feet or a volley into their feet. You're trying to get the other person to hit up on the ball and pop it up over the window. Yeah, absolutely. If you get an opportunity to attack it, attack it. But you're trying to cause the pop-up. So you're trying to keep your shot through the window, right? Cause the pop-up. Once it's over the window, then you can just hit away. Okay? No. Yeah. You've got to stay out of the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to cause a pop-up now. Pop up. So, hang on one second. So you popped it up to Jane, didn't you? Why wasn't she able to take advantage of it? No, it was. It was. You popped it up. It was up. You, Jane, wasn't able to take advantage of it because she came at the ball from underneath, right? Because her racket wasn't up. Right? This is why your racket needs to be up. If you're always coming at the ball underneath and then you get a chance to put a pop up away. Yeah. So this is this is the habit that we're working on is to keep our paddle up so that when we get a pop up, we have an opportunity to put it down. If your habit is always to attack the ball from underneath, when you get a pop up opportunity, all you're going to do is hit a lob. Right? There was. Yeah, there you go. You were a little late getting to it, but that's okay. You recognized it. One sec. One sec. How are you? Good. Is it nine o'clock or no? a little early? Oh no, eight, you were going to come in before nine. Yeah. Who's coming? Okay. Away until Saturday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Until the house is sold. Or, sorry, never mind, till her daughter moves. Okay, let's pull it in. Come on in for a second. So, the video is very, very useful for getting, making people aware of their habits and their tendencies, right? Um, the video is very, very useful to people who are working on improving their volleys because so many of our volley habits are bad that we're completely unaware of, right? You get into a firefight and you get anxious. You get excited, right? And you're... Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
So uh, part of volleying is take it, part of developing better volleying habits is take advantage of the video, right? That way you become aware of what you're doing and, and it makes you realize how important it is to work on developing these good habits. And then when you go out to drop in, you're not hitting the ball all the time, right? You're, a lot of time you're sitting there while your partner's hitting the ball. That's when you're working on your good habits, right? Keeping your racket up, being ready, watching for those pop-ups, watching for those opportunities, right? And at the same time, you work on teaching yourself just to remain calm and to see everything in slow motion, right? We're going to work on a game now where we're going to get excited and everything's going to get going fast. And when the ball gets going fast, your mind gets going fast. Good players learn to slow that down. You impose slow motion on what you're seeing. Tell your brain to slow down. Keep the excitement out of it. Try and look at it as a third-party observer and just be, you know, work on your good habits and be ready for that opportunity. Any questions about what we just did? Okay, let's go. Okay, come with me. We're going to go to the, the room and I'll show you. It's your point. Actually, that is your yeah, point. Same, yeah. same rule in tennis. Okay. Yeah. okay, so we're going to play a game. Uh, it's, we're going to play a version of 1, 2, 3, go. We call it 1, 2, 3, firefight. We're going to start off with three volleys. So I'll just get you off the sideline, Susan. I'll go over there and be Joe, Jane's partner. You guys can come on in and be my opponents. Come on in. Okay, so we're going to start with three volleys. So it's going to go, we're going to try three volleys. A volley might be short, might turn into a dink. The next shot should be a volley. Three volleys, and then the whole court opens up. Right? So, one, two, three. Oh, got in behind me. Good job. Okay. So now Jane would start. Doesn't matter who starts. One, two, three. There we go. Oops, sorry. I wasn't ready. Um, so this is where we want to be. We want to be, we want to have our racket up because we're going to get opportunities here to attack balls, right? So you need to, the, the, the frame of mind that you need to be in is I need to be ready at every moment for an opportunity to attack, right? While you're doing this, you're gonna get excited. But impose slow motion on the ball, right? Force your brain to perceive things slowly, slow things down. It'll help you with your tracking, it'll help you with your anticipation. We work a lot on this at all of our levels, and we'll get deeper into it the higher you get up. But this is just a great starting point. So you can pop in here. Okay. If you're, you're going to notice that if your racket's not high like mine wasn't when I was talking and, and trying to set this up, I wasn't ready. I had two opportunities to put balls away, and I didn't put either one of them away because I was busy talking. Okay. Out. Oh, roll, 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 roll. One sec. Right in Gary's feet, or Grant's feet.
One, two, oh. One, two, three. Good. We won't count the serve as one, we'll count the first volley as one. Yeah, there we go. Good. Okay, everybody has the hang, everybody has the rhythm of the game now, so we're going to play as teams. We're going to start off, you guys are going to do 0 -0 you guys are going to start the serve. And once you, you well, we're going to start off with the three volleys, right? So you're going to give her an easy volley. I understand that some of the volleys might fall short, they might turn into dinks. Just keep it going, we don't want to stop. Um, but then after the third ball, play it out. If you score a point, do you, everything you would normally do in a, in a pickleball game. Okay? You guys are a team now, so if you're serving and you win the point, you're going to rotate. But if you're receiving, you're not going to rotate. Yep. Two, three. Okay. Side out. One point. One. You're welcome. Is Joe here yet? Oh, it's too early. She's here? Oh, okay. Awesome. Joe, yeah. Okay. Chai is, yeah. Good defense. Your racket was ready. Why two? Get three going.
Good, you hit down on the ball. Awesome. A little low to hit down on, but you were you were ready for it. What's what's the score? Oh no! Okay, let's rotate then around Grant, and we'll start a new game. This time, I want you to keep score. So this is. Hang on one second. So. It's hard to go one, two, three, and count balls and keep the score. So assign one player to counting balls and one player to keeping the score. Good, how are you? Good. I just need to sneak in here and grab some balls. Good morning. Hey. Morning, Joe. No problem. I have a silly bat there and I'll get ready. I know you let me in to do this early today. One sec, one sec. Oops. Um, I didn't see it. I was So again, Susan popped the ball up, Jane wasn't ready, and he came at it from underneath. <laughs> um, and that time Jane popped one up and you came at it from underneath. So that's what we're working on. Oh, okay. I might I may be mistaken then. I might be mistaken. Nice. It's probably one early, but that's okay. Yeah, exactly.
โอ้ปั๊บปั๊บ